I am really excited for this video because I'm combining two of my most favorite topics. One, of course, is the Lightning Network, as everyone knows here, and the other one is data science. As you know, I'm working as a data science consultant. So I took the liberty and studied the data set that the Lightning Network provides us in order to find out how anyone could optimize the routing fees they are earning. A side effect of this video is that I also studied how expensive it is currently to use the Lightning Network. One disclaimer before we start, data science is a science, that means I have to make some assumptions. The assumptions that I made here is that each payment that is occurring is 1 millibitcoin in size, and I assume that every channel that has sufficient capacity also has sufficient balance to route that payment. Obviously this is not true, but I have to make some assumptions and I don't know the channel balances. Because the payment size is fixed, I also only changed the base fee rate, because the relative fee rate is also fixed for a fixed payment amount. In this diagram, you can see the distribution of fees that are being used for channels on the Lightning Network. As you know, the fees are announced in the Gossip Protocol, and what you can see in particularly is that the three most used fees are 1000 millisatoshis, 500 millisatoshis, and pretty much 0 or 1 millisatoshi. Also, you should pay a little bit attention because the Y scale here is um, logarithmic, which means that these three most highly bars are really, really high. Probably a better way to look at this data is to look at the cumulative distribution function. What this does is it shows for every base fee rate what's the percentage of nodes that have a lower base fee rate. So what you can see is that more than 95% of all nodes have 1000 millisatoshi or less as a base fee rate. In this diagram it is really easy to see that most nodes really have 1000 millisatoshi as a fee rate. But is this really a good fee rate? Does this really help you to earn most fees? In order to answer this question we still have to study a little bit how many fees are actually being paid currently on the Lightning Network. So I started the study by looking at the fees that I would pay to run to any other node. You can see the results in this diagram and what you can see in this diagram is that most of the times I pay 1500 satoshis for this entire route. But maybe I am very good connected or I'm very poorly connected so it makes even more sense to look at this data for all pairs of nodes. So now I looked at each pair of nodes which is already quite a lot of nodes because we have something like 5000 nodes in the Lightning Network and for each pairs of nodes I looked at the routing fees that I expected to make a payment from one node to the other node. The first thing that struck to our attention is that for almost two and a half million pairs of nodes, the routing fee is a little bit more than 1000 millisatoshi, so one satoshi, which is really cheap by the way. So, so the question already is, is, can we earn that much on the Lightning Network, at least for now? Again, such a histogram might be misleading, so it makes sense to look at the cumulative distribution function. And we can actually observe that our first impression was quite right. For almost 50% of all pairs of nodes, the routing is roughly 1000 millisatoshi. Also, you can see that almost nobody has to pay more than 3000 millisatoshis in total for, for making a payment to anybody else, which is also just nice to observe and to see that routing on the Lightning Network and making payments is really cheap at this time. That was for the fact that using the Lightning Network and making payments on the Lightning Network is really cheap at this point in time. Anyway, I promised you in this video that I wanted to explain you how you can earn more routing fees on the Lightning Network. Network. So for this I will use the document camera that the community sponsored to me. Thank you very much for all your support and I hope this again will be very helpful for you. So let's assume we have a lightning network with four nodes A, B, C and D and we have the following edges between them. And when we want to see that A makes a payment to D, we can uh, see what the shortest path would be, and this would be going from A over B to C to D with a total fee of 3. Now let us assume we have another node E in there and a fee rate of 1 Satoshi. Now the cheapest path is over E. In order to earn the expected amount of fees, we have to compute a couple of things. First of all, big N, which is the number of shortest paths between all pairs of nodes, and then PN is the set of shortest paths that go through a node N, and then the expected fees that a node N earns is 1 over big N times the sum over all fees of paths that go through node N. Of course, we don't take the total fee of the path, but just the fee that node n earns. The good thing is that n, pn and this huge sum are all computable and this is really great. Also it can be estimated a little bit so if we take this huge sum again we can basically um, say this is the between the centrality multiplied the node fee and actually we should say the average node fee. So now we can compute the expected earnings for every node in the Lightning Network and compare the expected earnings for every Lightning Network with other statistics. For example, the amount of neighbors this node has, the fee rate that this node charges, or also the between the centrality of the node. 
the most natural thing to do is to look at the fees that a lightning node charges. So in this case I looked at the base fee rates of all lightning nodes and compared them with the expected earnings in millisatoshis. And what you can see is that you have to charge a little bit less than a thousand millisatoshis to have top earnings. I mean there are some exceptions to the rule and also I don't show all lightning nodes because some have really high earnings but the general gist is here. In the next plot I wondered how I should set the fees of my lightning node. And this is really interesting. What you can see is when I have like a really low fee, obviously I don't earn that much, but what I can tell you from the numbers that I looked at is that I am included in many routes. When, when I increase my fees, my earnings are getting higher up to a certain amount and then it drops a little bit because now I'm excluded from a lot of paths. And then I can increase my fees again all the way to 250 Satoshis and then it decreases again. So I can then increase my fees again and again up to almost 500 milli Satoshis. This is actually where I earn most. So I think it was something like 490 milli Satoshis. And then it drops a lot because many people already have like 500 milli Satoshis of fee rates. Yeah, this is basically what this picture looks like. So for me personally, in the sense of how I am connected in the Lightning Network, a fee a little bit less than 500 milli Satoshis is actually the one that gives me the highest expectation values of earning fees. But that's a little bit strange. The first scatter plot showed that for most nodes the best fee choice is a little bit south to 1000 milli Satoshis. But I wanted to look at other metrics too. So let's compare the expected earning fees with the neighbors. And again what you can see is that the scatter plot is really not showing any good correlation so it seems that it does not really matter if you have like a lot of channels or not so many channels however when you look at this scatter plot it becomes really interesting now you can see that there's almost a perfect correlation between the between the centrality and the expected earnings and this is really something that you should aim for when you want to earn a lot of routing fees so you should try to create channels and set your fees in such a way that your between the centrality on the fee graph is really high this is something that when you think about it seems kind of obvious but I didn't expect this behavior before so that's why it's great to be a data scientist because you just study a data and you find out the result. When I'm updating my autopilot I will definitely create a heuristic that aims for this particular metric because the current autopilot neither the LND one nor the one that I created for Sea Lightning really aims for this and I think this would be really great if more people can have an autopilot that aims for creating higher fees for them. Also keep in mind that I work as a freelancer data science consultant so in case you have data science problems that relate to Bitcoin or the Lightning Network, you might want to hire me. The money that I will earn really will help me to create my Lightning Network book. And I personally think that uh, data science topics should be part of a Lightning Network book. If you don't need a data science consultant and you still want to support my work, you might want to check out my Telecoin fundraiser where I accept Bitcoin and Lightning Network donations. Or you can become a monthly Patreon where you can uh, donate monthly with uh, some fiat money. So either hiring me or doing a donation is highly appreciated as this will really help me to keep up with my work of creating educational content about the Lightning Network out there. I'm curious, what do you think are the best strategies in order to earn a lot of routing fees? Is it really creating the right channels? Is it adjusting your fee rates? Is it having a lot of channels? What are your experiences? 